Swedish Lapland, the perfect winter vacation. From winter activities to breathtaking places to see, this Swedish destination above the Arctic Circle has it all. Adrian and I spent four unforgettable days in Karuna, Yukasjarvi, and Abisko. And from the first day, we were hooked. Our adventures were thrilling. We stayed in a glass igloo and did things that you won't be able to do anywhere else. Stick around till the end. Every minute of this video is something you don't want to miss. Our journey to Karuna took a while. We stopped for a night in Stockholm where we chilled and enjoyed Swedish food. And after dinner, all I wanted to do was crash. We woke up at the crack of dawn the following day and off to Karuna we went. It was definitely freezing when we arrived, but mm, we didn't care. We were just happy to have arrived safely. By the way, car engines here freeze due to the cold, so they had to be plugged in at all times. <laughs> We're excited, very, very excited. And remember when I told you that we stayed in a glass igloo? Well, check this out. Our stay here was definitely one of the highlights of our trip. glass igloo where we will be staying for the next few nights so come in so you will see here we've got a panoramic view of the river and hopefully tonight we will see the northern lights through these windows it's a bit icy right now but we're trying to melt it by raising the temperature this is our bed it's a double bed and this is our little kitchen right here so we've got a sink, a stove, and some drinking water. So you see this mirror here, if you pull it down, it turns into a table. And here we've got some dishes. And here's our little toilet. <laughs> no shower, we have to actually have showers in the guest lounge. There wasn't much room in the igloo, so getting unpacked was a bit of a struggle. But anyway, we will have a complete review of our stay here at the end of the video. Make sure to stick around. We are walking to the ice hotel and it is freezing
Our walk here may have been a bit challenging due to the cold wind, but as soon as we arrived at the ice hotel, we knew that it was worth the cold and the wobbly walk. Ice Hotel is just mesmerizing. In a strange way, it felt out of this world. And it's great for kids too. And I say kids of all ages, including me. And within the hotel is an ice bar where Adrian and I toasted the start of our amazing trip with glasses of Prosecco. The Ice Hotel is this region's unique treasure. Founded in 1990, this hotel in the village of Yucas Yarvi is the world's first ice hotel. After its first opening, the hotel is rebuilt each year and is open from December to April. The entire hotel, including its chairs, sculptures, and beds, is a construction of snow and ice from the nearby Torna River. Artists each year are invited to create different rooms and sculptures, which are displayed as works of art for the paying public to see. Right in the middle of the hotel is a perfect place for warming up, a lavu hut. But the most magical part of this experience was seeing the ice hotel at night. It's hard to describe how it felt to be there in the dark. It was serene, awe-inspiring, and for some strange reason, we just felt at peace. Before our trip, I hoped that we would be lucky enough to see the Northern Lights again. And on our first night, our prayers were answered. I'm in my igloo and <laughs> this is what I can see. This is amazing. I can't believe we've been lucky again. It was a clear and cloudless night, and the moon shone bright. The sky wasn't completely dark, yet even with the moonlight, the northern lights danced gracefully, and the colors remained bright. So the northern lights are finally out. But the icing on the cake was being able to see this spectacle from the comfort of our own igloo. It was minus 20 degrees outside, 
But that didn't stop me and Adrian from taking pictures. Something to remind us that we may have done something right to deserve another chance to see the Northern Lights once again. If you would like some tips on how to see the Northern Lights, please click the link below. We have a video that provides you with the most helpful tips. Okay, let me give you a quick tour of where we stayed. Aurora River Camp and Glass Igloos. Located perfectly, it's a short drive from Karuna Airport and both town centers. It's right on the river, and when the river is frozen, the camp is just a short walk away from Yukas Yarvi. Apart from the igloos, there are cabins and apartments too. And this is a guest house. For those staying in igloos, this is where the kitchens, lounges, and bathrooms are. And that explains why I was walking in my pajamas with a wet towel in my hand earlier. And to warm you up on a cold day like today, there are two saunas available to use. Plus, a lavu hut where you can cozy up by the fire. I highly recommend staying here. We started our second day in Karuna with our tour guide picking us up to take us on a snowmobile adventure. Adrian and I couldn't wait to ride on the river and zip through the forest. I wonder how fast it'll allow us to go. When we do I heard there's like a stretch really? where they let you go. Halfway through our excursion, we stopped for some warm lingonberry juice and muffins. And on a beautiful sunny day like today, it was just perfect. Right. <laughs> Thank you. 
After our morning zipping around on our snowmobiles, Adrian and I drove further up north to another picturesque park of the Swedish Lapland, Abisko National Park. Abisko National Park is well known for its stunning natural landscapes, including the majestic peaks of the Scandinavian mountains and Sweden's deepest lake, Tornetrask. winter afternoon like today, a gentle stroll through its trails was a perfect way to end our day. After our stroll, we headed back to the tourist station to warm up and have fika, which is a Swedish version of a coffee and or snack break. In addition to this, the Abisko tourist station provides accommodation and a little bit of shopping for its visitors. On our way back to the camp, we were starving. Unlike Tromso, there aren't many choices for restaurants in Karuna, but we found this really cool Thai restaurant. With free cookies, drinks, delicious food at affordable prices, it easily became a favorite spot for us. Okay, I was kind of hoping I'd see the Northern Lights for two nights in a row, but it's cloudy. So there is no chance at all. It's 1 a.m. I'm going to sleep. How cold is it in the car? <laughs> On our third day, we decided to go dog sledding. And on a beautiful sunny day like today, Adrian and I knew that it would be the perfect day to spend the morning with these beautiful creatures. And I even got to get to know a few of them. We started off by getting changed into warmer gear. And this 
this is our guide, Nate. I'm telling you, Nate is the best guide ever. Then it was time for us to get to know our dog crew and get them lined up for the trip. They are the sweetest animals. And off we went. Adrian was a bit apprehensive at first, but after a few minutes, he eased right into it and became comfortable navigating the dogs. We are dog sledding, and it's a lot of fun. Adrian's doing a great job of driving and making sure that I don't fall off. It's a beautiful sunny morning. Can't get any better than this. Oh. <laughs> With Nate on his snowmobile guiding us where to go, the entire ride was flawless. And halfway through, we stopped for Fika at a lavu hut, where we enjoyed carrot cakes and coffee by the fire. Nate was great company, and we chatted away like old friends. Sadly, our ride through the forest had to come to an end. I didn't want to say goodbye. Thankfully, we were able to spend a few minutes with the huskies before we drove away. I've gone dog sledding before, but for some reason, this felt different. It was definitely the best one. After our dog sledding trip, we decided to visit the new town. But before we get there, let me tell you a little bit about what's happening to Karuna. This is Old Town, and this town is sinking, thanks to the mine that dominates all of Karuna. The mine is the main source of income for Karuna, and unfortunately, due to the amount of sinkholes the mining activities have created, Old Town is now sinking. So this town is on the verge of a very big move. This is Newtown Karuna. As you can see, there is construction going on everywhere. Most of the shops and restaurants have been moved here together with a town library.
It's a cute and modern place, but Adrian and I were very glad to see our favorite coffee chain here, Espresso House. With its array of cold and hot drinks and delicious food, we were happy to indulge. If you do come to any of the Scandinavian nations, I highly suggest stopping at an espresso house. You will not regret it. And right in the middle of Newtown are these cool ice features. Together with slides, which I had to get on, of course. Karuna Church is an iconic symbol of Lapland's architectural heritage. It is known for its bright red facade and striking design inspired by traditional Sami tents. Built in 1912, this wooden church is not only a place of worship, but also a popular tourist attraction, drawing visitors from all over the world. Sadly, the church now sits on a sinkhole too. So this means the townsfolk of Kiruna will be moving the church to its new location as a whole. In 2026, the entire 600-ton wooden building will be loaded onto trailers and moved to a new spot near the local graveyard, which is 3 kilometers away. That evening, we were picked up and driven for an hour and a half to Vitangi, to a local Sami reindeer herding community. What? You must be we go to the forest, you must be no. Hello. 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 <laughs> no, not the bag. <laughs> This is Frederick, the reindeer farm owner. I don't have any more. Oh my goodness. Yes, I... As part of our tour, Frederick gave us the opportunity to feed the deer and put us to work. I know. I say to you, I say to you. My job was to spread wood pellets for the reindeer to eat. I apologize for the blurry video, but it was hard to film in the dark. But check out the amount of reindeer roaming. Yeah. 
When we got back, it was time to get on our sleighs to chase the Northern Lights. Are you cold? A little bit. <laughs> it's just the minus like 20. Yeah. And this was my ride. Unfortunately, the sky was cloudy again and after an hour of trying, Frederick loaded me and Adrian onto a sled and dragged us through the woods behind his snowmobile. <laughs> no. Can we come in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello. Hello. We then relaxed in a Lavu hut where we were treated to hot blueberry juice and a reindeer sandwich, which was yummy by the way. And coffee, of course. And before we ended the evening, Frederick taught me a trick. Pop a brown sugar cube in your mouth and your coffee will never taste the same way again. Let's give it a try. Oh my god. That is good. <laughs> <laughs> that is really good. hard to say goodbye to this view. I loved waking up every morning to this. But I guess I can come back. My question to you is, what did you like the most about it? Uh, most about the place is obviously our views. Uh, we've got just stunning views mm -hmm. of the lake, snow-capped. Mm -hmm. And uh, did you mean the river? It's a lake, isn't it? It's a river. Okay, and a snow-capped river that we're facing out on, just mm -hmm. absolutely stunning. And then obviously uh, being able to lie in bed and see the aurora on a clear night, which we got, we we're fortunate enough to get on our first night. And you? Yeah, pretty much the same thing. The views there are unbeatable, right? It was really good waking up every day to nature. Yeah, although we didn't really see many animals or anything like that. A couple of birds, a couple of squirrel type things. Oh. Um, that was it really. Mm -hmm. Obviously quiet, super quiet at night. Mm -hmm. uh, see a few um, skiers mm -hmm. around and a couple of... Um, people walking up and down the trail. People walking up and down the trail, snowmobiles. Mm -hmm. So these are the views that we were talking about. So waking up to that every day was amazing, especially when the sun rises. Yeah. And you're very close to the Ice Hotel and you can see RV, which is very walkable just across the river. So I like that as well. Yeah. I did, I enjoyed staying here. The only thing I didn't like was of course, not having our creature comforts close by, you know, not having your own toilet, not having your own shower. And after a few days, because the toilet doesn't flush, it's like a composting system. It starts to smell in this small igloo. But it's a great experience overall, right? Yeah, probably a couple of days we were here for. So probably yeah. a couple of days we did notice a lot of people staying just for a night, mm -hmm. I guess for the experience, then heading out the next day. So my question to you is, would you do it again? 100%. Adrian and I woke up on our last day with heavy hearts. We loved it here so much we didn't want to leave. 
but before heading to the airport, we decided to head back to the Ice Hotel to have a little breakfast. Trying Frederick's coffee trick once again. <laughs> Our last adventure involved visiting the Sami Open Air Museum in Yukas Yarvi and marveled at their beautiful little chapel. And of course, we just had to, so we enjoyed another lovely cup of coffee in their cozy cafe. It was also a great way to learn more about the Sami culture and see a great collection of artifacts. But the highlight of it all was the amount of time we got to spend with their reindeer. As usual, they knew I had goodies, so they all wanted to be fed. Apart from this fella, all he wanted to do was cuddle, and that's what we did. Reindeer are normally very timid, but my friend here, for some reason, followed me everywhere. I wanted to take him home. Sadly, it was time for us to go, but we hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't yet, please like this video and subscribe to help us create more adventures for you. And next time, follow us to Stockholm. Thank you again for watching and we can't wait to see you again soon.